Hey, good morning, everybody. This thing on, you guys hear me okay? Okay, good. Um, I was hoping the warm-up music would have rocked a little more. It's kind of early and everybody's a little hungover. I don't even drink and I feel like crap this morning, but we had a pretty good party last night. So I uh, uh, appreciate everybody for uh, coming along, maybe sneaking out of the keynote a bit early. Uh, the CERN presentation was fascinating. I thought that was really cool stuff. So uh, it's, it's good to be here. This is my sixth OpenStack Summit myself. Um, I've been with New Lodge Networks for about a year and a half, uh, year and three quarters, but uh, with Viata before that and Juniper before that. And so I, I've been around these things for a little while and it's just, it's amazing to see how it's grown and, and uh, how it's gone global and, and how it's gone beyond the, what, three or 400 people we had in San Francisco at the first event I went to. So anyway, um, I'm a networking guy, and, and, and I'm, I've been passionate about networking and data center networks and, and uh, worked on some networking fabric things and have kind of evolved that technology and what I've been working on into some network virtualization and SDN things. Um, but the really interesting part of that conversation isn't necessarily IP routing and transport and things like that. It's about how we start to abstract the network into a really consumable model for DevOps and IT people. So that's really what SDN's all about. There's lots of arguments over open flow and various protocols and what's valid and what's not and is my controller open source or not but really what it comes down to is how I represent that network as a service to users and so this is what Nuage Networks is all about and what we're focused on. We do some really cool things at the networking layer that I'll talk about in a little bit about how we can kind of enable a higher performance Neutron environment uh, so that Neutron networks become production ready, become enterprise ready as we all know, as if we've, if we've uh, worked with OpenStack at all, the base level Neutron things, even in Juno, is still pretty lacking, um, has some serious scale issues and, and some limitations, what I can and can't do. When I get into a cloud environment that's very, very multi-tenant, as we've learned working with a lot of large cloud service providers around the world, um, th those limitations with multiple bridges and namespaces and things like that really starts to affect performance. So we're doing some pretty cool things, we think, to, to fix that, uh, leveraging a lot of routing technology from our parent company, Alcatel Lucent, and then uh, wrapping all that in this nice uh, framework that's really well aligned with the, uh, the uh, um, policy framework, the, the network policy for Neutron framework that we're also contributing to. So I'm, I'm going to do a quick overview of the solution and then a demo of our, uh, our, our application framework, our application policy framework that we're shipping today, uh, even in advance. Of, of the Neutron work being complete. So really the driver for all this and why SDN exists is the uh, data center it network is fundamentally flawed. It's, it's a bit broken. I've, I've got a virtualized compute and management system that lets me deploy resources quickly. I still go through a lot of manual process with trouble tickets and teams and groups of people to have to configure things and, and uh, request VLANs and, and have somebody touch the firewall and the router and the switching. So. This really slows down what I can do. This really limits the footprint on where I can deploy my compute environment dynamically because if I have to wait for a trouble ticket to get completed, um, it's, it takes too long. We've done a lot of things with SDN or Neutron or other elements where now maybe my network is represented as an API. I've accelerated things a lot. Um, I have a programmatic interface that maybe I can start to incorporate into my DevOps tools. But it also could introduce some new complexities. Um, maybe I'm forcing my DevOps guys to worry about networking. Like this network as a service environment, which Neutron is, Amazon Web Services in the VPC context is very similar in that now I'm forcing my DevOps people to learn how to provision networks. I'm presenting an interface to them, like in Neutron, that says, hey, DevOps guy, who's really good at deploying applications and servers, Go create a network, go assign IP addresses, go configure a router and assign ports to that router. These are a lot of steps that require um, network topology awareness and network configuration awareness that maybe a DevOps team is not expert in. And so it's not really abstracted into a consumable bottle and it puts a lot of burden on that DevOps group to learn new concepts and have to manage new things. What the DevOps people are good at is understanding their applications and how they need to be grouped together and maybe how they need to talk to each other. They don't care that I use a VLAN or a subnet or a router or a firewall. They know my web servers and my app servers and my database servers need to be in different segments or different groups. And I need to have some connectivity model between them with potentially some security policy that defines that. So the DevOps team really needs a simpler, more abstracted view. And the Neutron group-based policy extension stuff 
is intended to address this, and there is a lot of good work happening around that. Um, and I believe it's an extension that will be available in a later release of Juno, and then uh, it should be much better a little bit later on. The Nuage guys have been contributing to this and working this, and then delivering product that actually provides these functionalities for about a year. Well, we've been shipping this product for about a year and a half. Um, but what this gets us to is this policy approach to networking. And by policy, I really just mean templates, right? I can define my network service as a template. Maybe my network administrator actually makes those templates, configures all that specific routing detail, because the network administrator knows how to do that and knows what's required. I can have my security audit team review the templates to make sure they're compliant, and then I just give those templates to my DevOps guys to deploy over and over and over again through a really simple API call or simple API interface. And, and so this this is what, our, what we think policy-based networking is all about. Um, so this gets us to this mode where when my tenant or my application request requests compute resources, that happens instantly. There is a call to a network API that Nuage would deliver, and the, that network API would just consume those templates that were predefined, and all of the networking is done dynamically and automatically and rapidly. Um, the Nuwash solution is, is a bunch of software and a couple of pieces of hardware that actually deliver on this to allow you to build infrastructure. We start by leveraging Open vSwitch down here at the base where uh, um, this is our, we, we use the base kernel level Open vSwitch on KVM. We've also got flavors for ESX and for uh, Zen server and I can mix those together in the same environment. But, uh, we use Open vSwitch. We do some software on top of Open vSwitch where we actually replace that user agent with our own code and turn that thing into a distributed virtual router. So we're doing distributed routing and, and ACL capabilities as well as switching on every host. That's all controlled by an SDN controller, which is actually an operating system for a very, from a very mature advanced BGP MPLS router. So all of my routing functionality is available there today. And then that sits on top of that as our policy engine or this policy framework. The GUI I'm going to show you in the demo is the user interface to that, but there is a full set of REST APIs underneath that GUI that you can use to program. There's a Neutron plugin that talks to VSD, the, the policy engine. There's also some vCenter and, and vCloud Director uh, integration, and we've got a CloudStack plugin now as well. And the, the thing about the Nuage solution is I can blend and mix those things together. So we think what the requirements are for a production OpenStack network, something that I can do in production today with rock solid, available, stable networking, are kind of three things. I start with performance and deployability. And by performance, I mean I need to be able to do security grouping and multi-tenancy at scale. I need to be able to support lots and lots of high-speed flows. I need to be able to saturate that 10 gig link that I bought on that server. I don't want to have to choke that thing back to four or five gig if I'm limited by some multi-level kind of switching layer. Um, I need a rapid convergence performance. If I'm going to build a large-scale cloud environment and I have a DR scenario, I have to be able to stand up tens of thousands of new VMs quickly and not wait hours to do that. And I also need a way where I can integrate into existing environments. Because in the real world, in, in an enterprise, not everything's virtualized, not everything's OpenStack. I still have some VMware over there. I still have a bunch of mainframes over there. I have to be able to tie all those things together. And so to do that, I need to be able to leverage some gateways. And we deliver on all of these things. Um, one of the problems with, with OpenStack is this network node where I can do some simple L2 switching between two, common, two VMs on a common subnet. But if I have to route between them, I've got to go back to that network node. This creates a lot of congestion issues when I have to go for north-south traffic out to the WAN and also with east-west traffic between VMs. The distributed virtual router in uh, Neutron in Juno starts to address this east-west use case. It's not all that mature. There's still a lot of work to do there, but it is a step in the right direction. But the north-south use case of getting in and out of the environment is still not totally addressed. Also, the multi-tenancy aspects of needing multiple bridges to use IP tables to carve up tenants on a host is not completely addressed by DVR. So the Nuage solution actually turns that open vSwitch into a full-blown L2 through L4 router. So we do IP routing, we do ACL enforcement, we do VRFs. Um, so I've got isolation of IP space and, and routing on the hypervisor itself, controlled by a very, very scalable control plane that can manage hundreds of thousands of servers in a single cohesive environment. So I eliminate this problem of needing to go 
out of the server to get between subnets. I can do low, I can do local routing, IP routing, and transitioning between subnets without leaving the host because I have routing on the host itself. I uh, can go directly and choose the best path for east-west traffic between hosts, just using a VXLAN tunnel in between these two servers. And my north-south traffic is directly integrated with the LAN router. This control plane that we're using is an OS from a very mature router, the Alcatel Lucent 7750, which is deployed in just about every carrier around the world. If you're pinging an LTE network right now, you're probably using a 7750 router. So this OS is very mature, very proven. We're using multi-protocol BGP in some MPLS EVPN contexts to advertise these virtual overlay networks to an MPLS PE router at the data center edge. So if my data center is behind a router, I can advertise my virtual networks directly to that router and tunnel directly to that router with an automated advertised kind of control plane interaction so I don't have to manually configure everything on that router to support these services. I don't have to go to a VLAN gateway and then out to some trunked interface to get to that router. I'm directly integrating with that router. So very powerful in how we handle east-west and north-south traffic. Um, when I get to control plane and performance, so in this model, I'm, I'm tackling that flow and that IP routing. We can saturate a pair of 10 gig interfaces pretty easily on this, and we're pushing towards 40 gig, and then using some of these VXLAN offload NICs that we see out there, 40 gig and potentially 100 gig is well within reach using open vSwitch. And then, of course, we're across DPDK and some of these other technologies to look ahead of that. On the control plane performance, there have been some published studies and, and, and reports that say just the raw neutron networking that was in uh, um, Havana, I, I would get about, if I wanted to start, say, 75 KVMs in about eight hours, I'm seeing about two, or I, I, would, I can start about 75 KVMs in eight hours, which is about two and a half VMs per second. We ran into a customer on Wall Street in New York City that wanted to test a larger scale than that, or, or wanted to test some scale where they have 65,000 VMs running, and then they restart the network stack. And they wanted to measure how long it would take to bring things back up again. On the base neutron, they saw around 2.5 VMs per second. They tested one of our competitors' solution, and that brought that down to about 18 VMs per second. But then they tested the Nuage solution, and we were able to bring up uh, all of those uh, 65 kVMs in eight minutes, which was about 135 VMs per second. So an order of magnitude faster. We do that by using um, multi-protocol BGP and some, some techniques within BGP to advertise security groups across the network using this federated control plane, using the same scaling techniques we use in the internet itself. So you know, very, very powerful, highly available, very proven and can support just about any large-scale environment that we've seen so far. Um, on the openness front, which is the other thing we, one of the other things we think we need for a production-ready environment is I need to be able to choose. I need to be able to run OpenStack, but also blend in some VMware. I need to maybe use some CloudStack here and there where I need to. But I need to have an, a cohesive networking system across those. I need to be able to choose uh, gateways to connect to VLAN-based infrastructure that might not be virtualized. And I want to be able to do that with multi-vendor hardware. So we have our own top of rack device. I can also use Arista and Cumulus and a couple of others to enable that kind of environment. And I need to be able to provide security and other services through partners. So we've got a very advanced service chaining feature set that lets me connect in third-party firewalls, DPI devices. We're building some IPAM integration with some uh, uh, external vendors as well. And then the last, sorry, so more on the open thing. <laughs> on the last thing I need, I'm kind of rushing because I do have a six-minute video and I have six minutes left in my talk. So on the policy abstraction front, I need happy users and happy DevOps people using this system. And so to do that, I need some sort of really IT-focused interface to this uh, environment. Um, supporting the policy framework that, that Neutron's developing, but delivering on that today. So I'm actually going to jump real quick into the demo. This is recorded because you never know how internet connectivity is going to work. What you're seeing on the screen, sorry, let's try this again. What I'm seeing on the screen, are you guys liking that? <laughs> let's find, there we are. Make that big. 
So th this is our GUI over here on the right, and then I've just got a terminal that we're going to do some Neutron commands in a minute. This is the Nuage VSD user interface. It's multi-tenant, multi-user. I have a, care, a service provider view or an enterprise administrator view that will let me affect security rules and network topologies for all my users, and then I can allow my users to log in directly to the GUI or give them direct API access or give them access through the Neutron plugin to go consume the things that the administrator would create. So what we're doing here is we're just defining an ACL that says, from anything to the enterprise domain, I'm going to block Telnet. And this is an administrator creating this rule, so it's going to be enforced on all of my tenants' VMs and all of my tenants' networks, and they're not going to be able to modify that rule. It's, it's sort of a master rule that's going to be looked at first. So this will get created here and applied. And we'll, and we'll see I've got this applied on a couple of other domains. Domains are what we call tenants or users in, in the system. Um, so I, I see I've got a couple rules already built here. Now I'm going to switch over to the, our uh, application designer interface now. So now I'm going to go create this application stack. And this is really similar in interface to that policy framework stuff that I was talking about before, where I've got a user down here um, just created a new uh, website template. From that, he's going to create an application tier and call it web. We're going to create another application tier and call it uh, logic, and then we're going to create another application tier, uh, and I think we called it DB. Um, but these are just groupings where I'm going to connect servers to. And then I have some predefined security rules or contracts in the uh, uh, Neutron uh, policy framework definition that will allow certain traffic types between the web tier and the logic tier and the database tier. And so I'm allowing my SQL. I'm going to allow some other things. I have a macro that's defining my public internet or, or my floating IP space. And I'm going to assign a rule to that as well. And I'm going to make a contract here that's going to allow HTTPS to go in and out of that. And then I'm going to actually create another little network macro that says, from my enterprise group, I'm going to allow SSH. And so these are predefined macros or predefined network zones that the administrator created. And then this would be a user of a system just creating these uh, templates based on their application needs. So I'm allowing SSH here. So I've created these. Um, as I switch over and go back and look at one of those domains I used, I see that I created a few ACLs here. So those ACLs show up, and I can go and look at those rules, and I can reorder them as an administrator if I need to. So those things are automatically applied based on what was defined in that previous uh, app designer interface. Now, I'm going to switch over here to the um, Neutron side, to the uh, OpenStack side. I don't have any VMs running. There aren't any networks uh, created yet. And uh, I've got some images here. We're going to start a, we're actually going to use um, the Nuage extension to our Neutron plugin. This is some extensions we have where I'm going to bind, essentially create a port and bind it to one of those tiers in that app designer thing that I did before. So I'm creating a new app called Website, um, and I'm, I'm going to bind that to the tier of web over here in the app designer. And then I'm going to create a, you know, a, that tier is called Web Server. And now I'm going to go boot a VM and attach it to that port that just got created through that bind process. So booting a web server, I'm actually doing it in a container because I can. Um, and uh, we just used a small server to do this demo, so it was easy to run that. So we do support Docker and Linux containers in our environment as well. But so I'm just booting that VM, and I'm attaching it to the web server. I'm going to do a. Now I see the Neutron port list down here. I see I've got that port created, and it created a network. And so what just happened is my DevOps guy didn't have to go create a network and a subnet and a router and a port. All that stuff got created automatically by binding, uh, using the Nuage network bind function to just consume one of those, uh, one of those um, groupings in our app designer function. And, and so then by starting that VM, the network is automatically created, uh, the subnet was created, the router was automatically created, and the DevOps user didn't have to go step by step by step and, and design all of those networking things. The IP address is automatically assigned and, and everything based on the templates that my administrator would have defined. Now I can see that that VM's up and running. I have an interface on the Nuage system to monitor my VMs and see what's where. I'm going to speed this up a bit. 
I've got all kinds of uh, statistics I can monitor on those VMs and on the networks it created. We can go collect stats. We store them in a, a Hadoop-based database as part of our policy engine, so I can do monitoring and billing and threshold alarms on that as well. I'm going to go create a couple of more VMs. Those all get started pretty quickly. Uh, and then uh, hopefully I can run this through without going too much over my time. But so now I've got a couple of other VMs up and running. Uh, attached a couple of other ports on the other tiers on this thing. Um, what we're going to do in a second here is switch back over to the VSD interface, our Nuage interface, and uh, see that we also have a logical topology view of this network that administrator can use to look at. See, I've got these other VMs up and running. That's what we're showing here. Now over on the domain side, I can look at my design. I see the logical topology of all those subnets and all of those networks that I created. I can look at the VMs. I can see which access lists are applied. If an administrator wants to change an access list on a running environment, the administrator has a master view of that and can Im implement that change. And then as I go back and start deleting these subnets and deleting these uh, VMs, I see them get pulled out of the VSD and everything gets cleaned up automatically. So, Back to presentation mode here to kind of finish up for you guys. Um, so to kind of wrap things up, we're actually delivering on this policy-based framework um, today. We've got abstractions for IT users that make them happy. We've got a very high performance, very scalable solution that's deployable. We've got a lot of customer references of things that are using it. Um, and then uh, it's an open solution that lets me mix environments and choose best of breed hardware and uh, also choose multiple cloud systems to work together. And finally, directly upstairs from us at 11.15, we've got three tracks in a row. Um, first, Numergy is one of our marquee customers here in, in Europe, is going to talk about how they're using Nuage and OpenStack together. Then uh, Jonas, one of the guys from my team here in Europe, is going to talk about some use cases and private cloud things and some things we're seeing in the banking environment with SDN and, and OpenStack. And then finally, uh, Dimitri Stiliadis, our uh, CTO, is going to talk about scale and kind of the future of networking and SDN for OpenStack. So thanks very much for your time. Follow us and follow me on Twitter. We have a booth down at the end of the hall. And please attend our sessions this afternoon. Cheers.